one of this two-part scalp series, I covered the topic of excessively oily scalp in great detail. I ended it with recommendations on how to treat this annoying scalp issue. In this episode, I'm going to cover the equally annoying issue of dry scalp. A dry scalp is a scalp that lacks sebum secretion, causing the scalp to look scaly, feel tight, develop flakes, and often is accompanied by an itchy sensation. Dry scalp has several possible causes and can be a sign of or lead to something more severe. Apart from a tight, itchy scalp, those with dry scalp will also experience a substantial decrease in the health of their hair. Without the proper sebum lubrication that coats and protects healthy hair strands, your hair will appear dry, dull, and brittle, causing it to break easily. For those with kinky, tightly curled textures, we often wrongly assume that because our hair appears dry and brittle, that a dry scalp must be the cause. This is often not the case, as I mentioned in the What is Dry Hair, Why is Your Hair Dry video, tight curls prevent natural oils from sliding down your windy and kinky hair strands. Without external help from you, this causes your hair's condition to resemble hair that is suffering from dry scalp. Because of this, many of us have been taught from a young age to include greasing your scalp into your hair regimen. Constantly applying oils or grease to your healthy scalp will throw it off its natural course and even change the scalp's natural aesthetic pH. This change in pH can lead to more severe issues. It does not fix the problem and will result in you having to continue the cycle of oiling your scalp. So a rule of thumb for those with tightly curled hair, don't assume that your scalp is dry just because your hair is dry. For us, determining if you have dry scalp should first come from the state of your scalp and not your hair. And FYI, most of us don't have dry scalp issues. In fact, on the average, African Americans produce more sebum than Caucasians and Asians. Honestly, the potential causes of dry scalp are similar to what causes oily scalp. Everyone is different and our scalp reacts to similar external and internal stimulus in different ways. Some examples of what could be causing your dry scalp are stress and poor diet. Stress makes everything worse. There are always going to be things out there that can cause you to become stressed. What really matters is how you respond to it. We choose to be stressed. Without proper protection, prolonged direct sun exposure will cause your scalp and skin in general to become scaly and dry. If you know you're going to be exposed to direct sunlight for a prolonged amount of time, try spraying your scalp every so often with water or wear a thin straw hat. Similar to those who suffer from excessively oily scalp, hormonal fluctuations often due to pregnancy or monthly hormonal swings can also perpetuate dry scalp. A blow dryer's job is to rid anything in its path of moisture or water. If you must use them often, avoid blowing the heat directly on your scalp. Your scalp and hair does not appreciate scalding hot water. Even though it's tempting to use hot water for the purpose of killing bacteria and removing dirt, the fact is that frequent use of hot water is not good for your scalp and hair because the heat tends to dry out the surface of your scalp. The dryness can lead to dry scalp conditions. Those with eczema often also suffer from patchy dry scalp. Think about it, your scalp is also just skin. The only difference is that it's rich in sebaceous gland secretions and covered with thicker, longer hair than the rest of your body. If you suffer from eczema in other parts of your body, chances are that you also show symptoms of it on your scalp. Eczema, which is also known as atopic dermatitis, is often mistaken for seborrheic dermatitis. I'll be covering this topic in more detail in the next video. There are tons of other potential culprits out there that can cause dry scalp, like cradle cap, excessive washing, certain hair products. Seborrheic dermatitis, psoriasis. The reason for me listing all these potential causes of dry scalp is to show that this problem usually does not go away by itself. So it's important to resolve it now rather than later. 
Use the process of elimination to rule out less severe causes of dry scalp. If the problem still persists, seek medical attention. Stay tuned for the last part of this three-part series where I'm going to go over how to test for dry scalp, the big difference between dry scalp and dandruff, and recommendations on how to treat dry scalp conditions. As always, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.